Today we're starting a brand new series and it's called Have Fun. Have Fun. This is a statement that I say, I, so I preached a series a few months ago and I told you that at the beginning of that series, I was like, this is something I tell my kids off, often, was make good decisions, make good choices. Well, this is something else that I tell my kids. I don't just tell them, instruct them, that, hey, make good choices, make good decisions. But I also often tell my kids, in everything you do, have fun. Absolutely go have fun. I probably use this more as a baseball coach than I do as a father. We started practice this week for fall baseball, and we had our first practice and we were practicing yesterday morning and and I looked at my my guys and I, I instruct them these kids these these 11 and 12 year old boys I instruct them and I I, I I get after them when they need to be got after and I yell at them sometimes when they need encouragement or they're not hustling I need to try that as a pastor sometime I need more out of you leave it on the field give it your all I know you got it in there. Let's see it. Some of the things I say to them, some of the ways I say it sometimes when they're not listening. But I sat there, I sat there yesterday and I looked at my boys that are on our team. And I said, at the end of the day, we're going to have fun. And we're going to be the team that when other kids are standing around watching us from the bench, from the, the bleachers, or the other team that we're playing is watching us, they're going to look and say, I wish I was on that team. Not just because we're going to be good and we're going to give it our best, but we're going to have fun doing it. I want kids to look at my team and be like, I want to be on that team. I want my phone ringing off the hook at the end of the season saying, hey, will you take my kid in the spring when you draft a team? Because I want him to play on your team. A parent texted me this week, because I took his kid in the draft this year and I had gotten to know him, him and his son. And he texted me yesterday or Friday, maybe it was Friday. Anyway, he texted me and said, I'm so glad we're on your team. That makes me feel good. Not that I think I'm a top-notch coach, but I'm one that likes to have fun. And I want, he wants to be on the fun team. And I'm just okay with that. Because I think in life, we need to have fun. I may not be the best parent. I may not be the best baseball coach. I may not be the best pastor. I may not be the best husband, the best golfer. I like to play a little golf. I, I'm not the best golfer. I may not be the best Christian some days. Is there ever a day you feel like you haven't been the best Christian? But I'm going to have fun doing all those things. We're going to look like we're having the best time. Even when the world's falling apart around us sometimes. Life is better when it is filled with joy and when we have fun. Because life is crummy sometimes. Can I get an amen? Life is downright crummy sometimes. It just stinks. There you go, Junior. Thank you. He can't even talk out loud and he's clapping his hands. Life just, sometimes you just want to just be like, man, I'm done. This week, I can't wait for this week to be over. I bet some of our educators felt like that this week. Man, if we can just survive week one, if we can just get through it, then we can make it. We're starting this series, and it's called Have Fun. We're going to talk about it over the next probably three weeks. Have an understanding of what fun is, why we need more joy and fun in our lives, and how we can go about it. You may be looking at me and saying, man, this is crazy because there is nothing absolutely biblical about what we're doing right now. Hey, y'all y'all, hired me. Gave me a microphone and a platform, so this is what you get. But I would argue that it is absolutely biblical. And over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about it. And it starts today in Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Read this scripture. Look at this. Look at what look at this on the screen. So I commend the enjoyment of life. 
Does anybody read it differently? So I commend the enjoyment of life because, listen, this is scripture. There is nothing better for a person under the sun than to eat and drink and be glad. Look at the next part. Then joy will accompany them in their toil all the days of the life God has given them under the sun. There's going to be difficult days. But if you enjoy life, it's going to help you get through life and through those difficult days. So we're going to eat, drink, and be merry. And enjoy it, enjoy all of it. Here's what the New Living Translation says. I even like this one better. Look what it says. So I recommend having fun. I'm going to start reading from this translation because I like it better. I reckon, this is the Bible. This is God's holy word. I recommend having fun because there is nothing better for people in this world than to eat, drink, and enjoy life. That way they will experience some happiness along with all the hard work God gives them under the sun. There it is. You're probably already thinking, that, well, God's given me some hard work. Both in my calling, in my vocation, in raising my kids, in being a, uh, the person he's called me to be, it's hard work. And I'll just tell you right now, it is so much more enjoyable when you have fun doing it. Making the best of it. Hear your pastor. This is truth. The work's not going away. Every day is a grind. Every day is effort. And I'm exhausted thinking about tomorrow. Every day. I'm exhausted from this past week. We started school. We tried to get back on a new routine. It, it, was, it was earlier mornings and it, it, the sleep wasn't there. And it was stressful and, 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 and we made it. But boy, it was a grind every day. We started two new sports this week. We started school this week. We started Wednesday nights this week. We had back to school Sunday last Sunday. It's been an exhausting week on top of everything else that comes along and things that you had to do in life. Because maybe you put in 60 hours this week at your job. Maybe things came up and you had to make the repairs on, at the house you didn't know, expect to have to do. And in the middle of that, your pastor's standing here on a Sunday morning saying, hey, let's have fun. Let's have fun doing all those things. But it's not just your pastor saying it. God's word is telling us that. His holy word, the Bible. God has us on this journey where he's molding us and making us as we sang about this morning. He's got this journey that he's got us on. He wants to do work through us on this earth. And this series is about adding joy and fun to the journey of life. Now I'm just going to say it. There's some Sunday morning, some of you walking here, and I'm just like, man, they're not having fun. I can look at your face. I wear, I wear that face sometimes. Some of you will come up to me and say, hey, you okay today? Yeah, I'm good. Are you having fun? No. Nope. No. Nope. Printer didn't work this morning. Ain't nothing good about today. I'm not having fun doing that. I'm just giving you examples. But some of you walking here sometimes, man, I'm like, I don't even want to speak to them because I'm scared of them. That's a joke, but I'm being serious. And I get it. Maybe you're wearing something that week that has troubled you from the week past. Maybe you're dealing with something. And sometimes I just want to look at you as a kid, like a kid would do and say, hey, let's put our smiley face on. Let's turn that frown upside down. Sometimes we just need somebody in our life that'll tell us that. Just make us smile. Just try to change our situation. And believe it or not, sometimes when you change it on the outside, it, it changes you on the inside a little bit. It just kind of makes you feel better. Why do we enjoy compliments so much? Because it just makes us feel better about ourselves. 
Oh, well, thank you. Yes, it's, it's a new shirt. Thank you for noticing. Yes, I did get a haircut this week. Do you like it? Thank you for complimenting me. Things like that just make us enjoy life a little better. I believe God wants us to enjoy our lives. We want to have fun through life's journey. Not every day is fun. It's not always filled with wonderful things, exciting things, positive things. We may feel like we cannot have fun on certain days, but we can certainly have joy on those days. And I believe joy leads to fun. Maybe we feel like life is too serious sometimes to have fun. Maybe we feel like life is too difficult on a certain day to have any fun and get any good out of it. But if we believe the scripture that was just on the screen that we read together, then we have to believe and realize that there's nothing better in this life than having fun. Is that not what the text said? There is nothing better under the sun on this earth in this life than enjoying it. Now, it doesn't say that that's the only thing that matters. Because that's not what God's word is saying there. There's a lot of other things that matter in life and a matter on our journey and our walk with the Lord. But of the most importance is getting enjoyment out of it and finding joy in our relationship with him. In this life we have, I believe having fun is one of the main ingredients. It's one of the main ingredients. If, if, if God is the one that's creating our life, I believe as he's putting the ingredients together to form us into who he wants us to be, as we sang about this morning, I believe he's throwing more than anything some fun in there, some joy, because he knows we need it in the world we're living in. I don't want a boring life. I hope you don't want a boring pastor because if you do, then it's been nice knowing you. Maybe some of you can't eat cheese. And okay, okay, I'm sorry. But it'd be like eating pizza without cheese on it. How boring would pizza be without cheese? That's, that's my opinion. If you can't have it or don't like it, I'm sorry, but I'm just giving you an illustration. Like, like, I like pizza, but boy, just imagine eating pizza without the cheese on it. And I feel like life without joy in it and fun in it is like pizza without cheese to me. I don't want any part in it. Just throw it away. I want life and work and family and even my church to be fun. Can we agree? I remember seven years ago, standing on this stage, it looked a little different. Standing in this room, preaching some of my first sermons as a pastor of Gordon Lake. Seven wonderful years. Boy, I looked younger back then, didn't I? <laughs> hey, I, I deserve that. That's fun. That's fun. We're having fun. And I remember, I tell this story sometimes to people that want to hear about Gordon Lake and what God's doing and how God's been moving. And, and I've always tried to use humor to get light in the mood, get us engaged. I want you to be my friend. And I remember coming in here and new pastor, new guy, a lot of energy. It was mainly an older crowd when I started pastoring Gordon Lake. Wonderful, many of you, some of you are, are here today that were a part of that. And I remember coming in here first, my first couple of Sundays and preaching in the kind of same way I've preached this morning already. And I remember saying some things that I knew were funny. I was like, man, I'm putting that in my notes, that's funny. And I stood up here behind the pulpit and I read what God had given me for that illustration and people just stared at me. Not one person laughed. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I don't remember what I said, but I'll never forget the first time I said something. And I think it was here when I was visiting for the weekend to see if you wanted me to be your pastor. And I stood up here and I said something. I was like, and I remember looking at my wife on the way out of town saying, I said some funny things and they didn't laugh at any of it. 
And she was like, yeah, it was a little stiff. And that's no offense. We can be reverent in church and we can have fun and enjoy it at the same time. And you have shown me that, boy, seven years looks good on us. Because now we can laugh together. Jeff can make fun of me from the back of the room. It feels a lot less tense. It's enjoyable. We make jokes. You fellowship during our meet and greet and laugh and what I man, I just watch you, I stand up here and just watch you laugh and smile and giggle and it's it's the most beautiful thing. It's so wonderful. And I believe God wants us to just lighten up a little bit. Have some fun. It's that important. On Monday, speaking of school starting back, on Monday I had to take Charlie to school. New year, new teachers, new grade, new school, new opportunities, new friends, new classes, new challenges. We get to the school. Apparently it was, everybody in the county was there. We sat in line for 30 minutes. From the time I pulled up to the school to the time I dropped him off at the door, it was 30 minutes. So that gave us quite some time to talk. <laughs> so we sat there and we we're talking and he and I were just discussing different things and we got the radio playing and we get up closer to the front of the school and I start, I could sense, I looked at him, I said, are you excited? He said, yeah. I said, all right, are you scared? Are you nervous? A little bit. And he, I was surprised he admitted it, quite honest. And I started talking to him, I was like, I, I could sense a little nervousness in him. New opportunity here, but, but y'all have met Charlie, he's pretty social. Like, he, he fits right in, jumps right in there. So I thought, oh, he's going to be fine. He'll be good. And he has been. But I wanted to, you know, it's my son. I wanted him to feel good in the moment. I wanted to know when he got out of that car, he was ready. At least up here. And so we get closer, I looked at him and I said, I said, buddy, you're going to be fine. It's going to be a great year. I said, just go be yourself. You're high energy. You're a lot of fun. People love you. Go be yourself, who God's called you to be. Just trying to break it up, giving him a pep talk, making him feel more comfortable. And before he got out of my truck, I looked at him and said, hey, man, go enjoy it. Go have fun. This is some of the greatest days of your life. Middle school and high school, you're just going to love, you'll meet. I was like, you're about to meet so many new friends because all these schools come together into one school. I was like, man, there's so much opportunity ahead of you. I was like, go enjoy it. And in everything, in the middle of the challenges and the work and the, uh, everything that you had to put forth, the effort to make it happen, have fun doing it. And let me tell you something. I told my wife this week, I said, here I am giving my 11-year-old this pep talk as he goes to middle school, and school is so much more fun than it used to be. School wasn't fun like it is now, man. Could y'all imagine if we'd had the fun they have? They had two pep rallies this week. Who does that? It's not, what? They have so much fun. We were there to learn. They have to make sure they have a good time so they don't get complaints. I looked at Charlie and I was like, buddy, I want you to go have fun. If you want to have joy in this journey of life, I might not be there every day when you get out of bed or you walk out the door or you get out of your car to go into work or wherever you're going. I may not be there to give you that talk and say, hey, go have fun. Go enjoy today. Get the best out of it. Because there's nothing more important under the sun than this. But what I can do is give you three things that I feel like can help you get the most fun out of life. Here's the first one. Understand that fun is intentional. Fun is absolutely intentional. It has to be intentional. You can sit back and and let fun happen to you or you can decide to let fun happen through you. Now, fun happening to you is awesome. It's really cool. But when you are the fun one, 
that's even better. Because think of what you can do in someone else's life for someone else if you decide every morning, I'm going to have fun today. I'm going to get the most out of today. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to smile everywhere I go. I'm going to put on my happy face. I'm going to be encouraging to others. I'm going to lift others up. I'm going to be in good spirits. And I'm going to change somebody's world today because just by being an encourager and having joy. Just think of the power of that. It costs us absolutely nothing except a little effort just to go and have some joy. It's no one else's responsibility but yours to make sure you have fun and enjoy life. Sometimes things, there, there's drudgery in our lives and things aren't so fun, like work. Some of you are sitting here today and you're like, man, I gotta go to work in the morning. We got it back to school tomorrow. Here we go again. I got to get up at 6.30. I got to make my kids lunch, my kids breakfast. I got to get their clothes out, help them get dressed, get out the door, go about my day. Got to take care of home and family. And those things, those things can be just challenging on our minds, on our lives. You have to make those things fun because there's nothing better than having fun. But you can only do it if you intentionally make it that way. You have to have a mindset to say, hey, today's going to be different because I'm going to have fun. Here's the second thing. Fun is spiritual. Fun is absolutely spiritual. I mean, since I'm going to share this message, I probably need to make it spiritual, right? Fun is spiritual. Here's, here's what Proverbs says. Proverbs 17, 22 says, a cheerful heart is good medicine but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Fun is fuel for your soul and food for your spirit. Pure joy is only found in Christ. Amen? Pure joy is only found in him. There are a lot of people out there living outside the love of the Lord that think they are experiencing joy in their life. They don't know joy until they've known him. I can order basically anything I think I need or want off Amazon today and within a couple of days it's going to be sitting on my front porch. It's amazing what we can what we have on demand at our fingertips these days. But you'll never go on Amazon and look for a box of joy and order some. You can order some things that might bring joy and fun to your lives. And sometimes we splurge and do those type things. But it's only temporary. Because joy is not physical. It is spiritual. It starts in here from him. And I would argue that the people sometimes, life's tough. I know there, there, there's, there's days that maybe you just don't feel it, don't want to show it. But there are some people in this world who call themselves Christians and they look like they're having the worst life of their, that they could ever have. And I'm like, man, where's your joy? The joy of the Lord is our strength. That's what keeps us going each and every day. Find some joy in life. People are like, man, if I could have won that one and a half billion dollar lottery, I'd have some joy. If I could just get over this hump, I would have some joy. If I just had that job that they had, the house they live in, the car they drive, the amount of money they make, the swimming pool in my backyard sure would be nice, I could have some joy. If my life was changed just this much, I could have some joy, and yet Christ has changed our life for the absolute good, and sometimes we act like we have no joy in it. How much greater change can we, in, can we go through than seeing our hearts be made new? There's no, more, there's no greater joy that we can experience. Sometimes we just got to understand that a cheerful, cheerful heart is good medicine. It is good medicine. 
And I'm going to use Donna Estes as an example. Donna, you've heard me talk about it a few times. Donna's been going through some cancer treatments. I mean, for the last few months, she's been going every week traveling to Nashville just to get cancer treatment. Right in the middle of her work week and still having to keep up with her work schedule while she's out of town. She teaches at a university. You don't get time off. You just get it in when you can. And she's dealing with this on top of some other personal things she's talked to me about as her pastor. And life's been challenging for Donna over the last few months. Years even. And Donna calls me just about every week. We talk about once a week. We'll talk on the phone and it's usually, I'll, I'll call and check on her. Usually she's good about calling and saying, hey, I just want to update you on what happened at my doctor's appointment. And Donna will start to share with me every week, hey, this is what happened at my doctor's appointment. And she'll tell me what the treatment was like, what the doctors had to tell her. And then she says something interesting to me almost every week. She says, the people treating me were so excited to see me because they wanted to know what new jokes I had for them that day. I mean, this is a lady that's so put out by life right now. Just imagine every, every week you had to travel to Nashville right in the middle of the week, stop life as you know it, to go get some difficult treatment. Stay in a hotel overnight. It's challenging. And yet she saw her role as bringing joy to the lives of those people who are treating her. They looked forward to seeing her just so she could put a smile on their face. I'm so confused. Shouldn't they be entertaining her? Shouldn't they be trying to make her feel? They don't have joy. She walks in there with joy right here. And a desire to share that joy with others. It's not about the jokes it's not about the fun for her. It's not about being entertaining. It's about going and shining the light of Christ and sharing his joy with those around her. And when she talks to me on the phone, she'll say to me, hey, let me, show you, let me, let me tell you these new jokes I shared with them. And as I'm getting off the phone hearing her talk about her difficult week, asking for prayer, she's making her pastor laugh on the other end of the line, sharing these jokes with me. Why? Because she understands that cheerfulness is the best medicine. A cheerful heart is absolutely the best medicine. And we can sit here and we can wallow in the circumstances that, that we have, are facing. Or we can say, you know what? I'm not going to be overcome by the things of this world. The best thing under the sun on this earth is to enjoy life and have fun doing it. And I've, I'm determined I'm going to do just that. We've got to be intentional about it. We've got to understand that it's spiritual. And finally, we've got to understand that fun is relational. Fun is relational. Pastor Philip, you can come. Fun brings people together. Why do you think we do fun things here as a church? We do fun things here as a church because I understand it brings people together. Many times we'll have these fun events like we did last Sunday. And I'll advertise it through social media and in the bulletin and I'll stand up here and tell you about it. And you'll hear me often say or you'll read it in the bulletin or on Facebook, come join us for a time of food, fellowship, and now, food's great. And food's going to bring people together, too. Fellowship will do the same thing. But if people know that something's going to be fun, oh, I'm in, I'm in. I'll do that. As a matter of fact, we spend a lot of money every year trying to create fun. A lot of money. Why do I go to a Braves game? Because it's fun. And it costs me hundreds of dollars every time I go. But it's something I budget for so that me and my family can have fun. 
Why do we go on trips? To have fun. Why do we go to a park with our kids? To have fun. Parents, you know as well as I do, if you just sit around every day while you're at the house and don't do anything fun, your kids are going to let you know about it. I remember when I was a kid, you could tell who's, which kid had the most fun home. So every kid wanted to go there. Why do you think kids want to go to their grandparents' house? Well, grandma can cook. And number two, it's fun. They can get away with anything. You can have fun at the grandparents' house. They'll never tell you no. My kids have figured that out. All of a sudden, Mimi's fun. We want to do things that are fun. And fun is relational. It brings people together. And I want you to know that your relationships are directly impacted every day by how much you enjoy the moment. And whether or not you intentionally choose to live a spiritual life of fun. Let me give you an example. When you walk in the door at the end of a day, and I'm just kind of using my context, how you walk in that door and greet your family is going to determine the rest of the evening in many cases. I can have a tough day. And let's say here I'm here at the church and it's been a tough day for whatever reason. Maybe it's because... I went through something, something happened. Maybe you all were going through something and I found out about it and I just, I'm down. But between here and Chickamauga, old Mew needs to pull it together. Because I don't need to take that home to my family. Because I want them to have fun and enjoy life. And understand that enjoying life is the most important thing under the sun as a Christian. I want my kids Listen, it's no wonder some of our kids don't want to serve the Lord. Because we don't, we don't see it, they don't see it as fun in our lives. I want my kids to think that I serve the Lord because I enjoy it, Linda. I enjoy everything about it. It's not a task for me. Going to church is not a hassle. I don't, I'm a pastor, I get it. I never miss going to church as a parishioner. Because it wasn't a task. Sunday mornings is not a task. And if you see it that way, I don't blame you for not wanting to come. Thank God we can come to church. Thank God we still got this freedom and I'm having fun and I enjoy it. I enjoy seeing your faces every week, hugging your necks, singing songs together of praise. I want my kids to see it that way. You know, I rarely bring my kids here as a dad during the week. I try my best not to bring my kids to work. It happens sometimes. There are, there are occasions. But if I do, it's very limited. Because I don't want my kids to see this as a place of drudgery. I don't want them to see it as a place of work. I want them to see their church and their church family as something of enjoyment. I want them to be excited about coming here. I want them to see that fun is relational and it's done through the body of Christ. I got home just recently. I was coming home after a long day and I walked in the house and, and, and I didn't, I don't know, I, I had no idea what life looked like for my family that day really because I'd been gone all day at work or whatever. And I walk in, and my daughter's in her room, and my son's in his room, and my wife's sitting on the couch. They're all in separate rooms, doing different things, just enjoying quiet, alone time. And we like to have fun at my house. We like to have fun. I'm always joking around. If you, I, mean, I know it surprised you. We like to have fun. We like to take our kids to do fun things. We like to laugh. We laugh a lot at my house. If you're not laughing at your house, just invite me over. We'll laugh. 
further be with food. We'll laugh a lot. But we like to have fun. And I understand that life is affected by the fun we engage in. And I walked in the house and everybody split up. My wife's on the couch and I sat down and we just started talking about something. And I was telling a story or something. And before you know it, we were just laughing. I almost laughed. I don't even remember what it was. I'm laughing. I'm almost laughing thinking about it. Because we just got tickled. Mitzi and I are just sitting there and we just got tickled about something. And we're laughing. In our house, we've got a living room and then our kids' rooms are upstairs and there's a loft. Where they can walk out on the loft and see downstairs over us. And I watched my kids walk out of their rooms. Both of them. They came out of their, they, whatever they were doing, video games, reading, playing, I don't know, whatever they were doing. They came out of their rooms and stood, I could see their faces, they stood at the banister and they looked down and they were like, what's so funny? They stopped what they were doing just to come find some fun. They wanted to know what was happening. They wanted in on it. They started giggling and had no idea what we were laughing at. People are attracted to fun. People are attracted to joy. Because when you see joy and fun in someone's life, you see fulfillment. And Jesus gives us that, right? Show it. It starts today. Today, you're going to walk out that door and you're going to be like, I'm having fun, I'm having fun, I'm having fun. I'm going to have fun. I'm determined I'm going to have fun. I'm going to enjoy life and whatever it gives me. And I'm going to try to get others to have fun along with me. Can we do that? All right, would you stand to your feet? Now this is the part where you probably think, well, the pastor's about to make us do something that's going to be fun. Now, I'm not going to do that today. I know you were ready. You were ready. Here's what I want you to do. When you, when, you, when you hug somebody's neck today, I want you to tell them, hey, have fun this week. Go enjoy life. Go make the best of it. I'm telling you, it's going to attract people to you. People are going to ask you, what's going on in your life? What are you so happy about? How are you? Come on a minute. There's something different about you. And they're going, to come out of the, they're going to come out of their rooms. And they're going to overlook you. And they're going to see that something's different. Because there's a special joy about you that they want in their lives. Let's do that this week. Let's go have some fun.